fuck did you just say? I want to retire in Europe so I can go to fucking soccer games. Get the fuck out of here then. Go to fuck away. I can't retire You're fired. right now. You fuck off. Oh, now I can. Okay. You're fired. Yeah, now you can do whatever the <laughs> fuck you want. Get the fuck out of here then. Is it because your favorite sport's there? Yes. I don't care what it is. America's the greatest place on the fucking planet. I didn't say it wasn't. Huh? I didn't say it wasn't. Well, that's how I interpreted what you just said to me. I'm going to take offense to it. I'm going to start a fight. I'm going to be an asshole. I can go to any country that has a U.S. embassy. And I can feel part of this country still. Get out of here. Fucking, that's why people don't like you. <laughs> you guys think of the sign. Pretty cool sign. It is Jay. cool. Yeah, I'm glad that it's, uh, I'm glad that it's tiny. It looks like a little bent, but it's all right. Jesus. <laughs> Six inches, a little bent. Kind so of slightly to the left. <laughs> my right, your left. <laughs> Depends on what you're, how you're taking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, fuck. You know what I do see a lot on the line now? Hmm. I, this is, I think that uh, I'll take flattery from this. Hmm. I mean, I'm, it's pretty exciting. See, I'm a, I, I've always been a huge supplement fan. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot of people like doing limited release uh, flavors now. Mm. It's become a thing. I have saw that a lot. We like to do that. I like to do that. I thought it was like a cool thing that we could do because limited release is really what we are as All-American Roughneck. And then, uh, you know, Axe and Sledge just being us. Legitimately me in a supplement brand. The fuckery, the fun, the great formulas, the fucking highest end ingredients you can. And now that I see a lot of people doing limited releases, it's pretty cool to see. Um, knowing that we play a huge role in that because our fan base loves it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, I see it and I'm like, okay. Like, it's kind of something that we really have put into... I'm not saying we started it, but I didn't see many people do it before us. No. And, no. and now I see people and we've kind of like ingrained it into the industry. And I take it as flattery because it means that people are enjoying they're enjoying this yep. it's good because it gets people excited about a company about their day about their pre-workout about the flavors that they can have it gets them out of their fucking comfort zone in a way to inject it into their uh into their routine mm -hmm. into the fun part of their life so i mean that's why we did it because that's what we wanted to do i was like we should do this it's fun it, it makes go, going into the gym every time like fun fucking right it's like how oh, i get to try a new flavor and it tastes really good because i ate clean all day and i had not nothing sweet all day yeah I'm fuck shit up yep i love it so and 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 so i see it and i'm like okay like we kind of like we literally put like a little bit of a niche into the industry about how we do things and i see a lot of other companies doing it they change the labels of their products they change the uh, how we handle the label the packaging I'm going to say that we're playing a huge role because this company has grown astronomically in the past the past 12 months. It's pretty fucking big. Um, and how we do things with the patented ingredients. You see a lot of other companies do patented ingredients. Before us putting patented ingredients, like making sure we put numerous, not just one patented ingredient, Hydraulic has five fucking patented ingredients. Yep. You mean to tell me a fucking pump pre-workout has five patented ingredients? Yeah. Yeah. That was me. Mm-hmm. Pat was on board, but wasn't on board all the way. <laughs> and I was like, we got to do it this way. Uh, same thing with carbohydrate powder. Pat ingredients in a fucking carbohydrate powder. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not one, three. Yep. So when doing all these things, actually, no, four. 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 Uh, so doing all of these things, uh, I believe, like, even HD Muscle, Hostile, like, uh, seeing those brands – and what they're becoming, they, they're doing similar things. Because supplement companies kind of went on the skimpy end of things. That's why we started doing things our way. They were always on the skimpier end of things. Any way to cut a corner. Like, bro, I'm we, doing this and how ingrained we are. I know exactly how to fucking cut costs on products. Mm -hmm. Do we? No. Because we said we'd never do that. Is it possible? Fuck yeah. We can degrade the level of our supplements in a fucking heartbeat and make way more fucking money. And no one would fucking know. 
But that's not what we're about. That's not what we do. And that's what supplement companies have done in the past. And now seeing companies put patented ingredients into their products, go on the higher end of things because they know it's possible because there's companies out there doing it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Because every you'd see patent ingredients existed. I'm like, why don't we just use all patent ingredients? Well, Seth, it's because that'll double your fucking costs. Oh, that sucks. Then you learn about margins and you learn about volume and you learn about all these things and how it's possible to get there. And I'm like, well, if it's possible to get to that number, I think we can get to that number. Then you get to that number and you're like, fuck yeah, let's go harder. So uh, so seeing these brands with the patent ingredients, like Hostile, HD Muscle, uh, other companies out there doing it, I'm like, fuck yeah, good job, guys. Yeah. It's good to see because it makes it better for the consumer. Of course, and, it, and it's... Uh, it as far as supplements go in the industry, it's a whole other way of selling your product. Before, most supplement companies were relying on fucking shitty. paid traffic and fucking shit marketing. Shitty marketing, yeah. To deliver a shit product to a one-time buyer and move the fuck on. That's yeah. what's occurring. Yeah. That is not occurring with us or these companies that are using solid ingredients, good flavor profiles, having fun with the marketing, having fun with the designs. Yes. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. it and it, it makes me feel good because I know how good our team is and I know uh, what our, our, our retailers, what they do and the response that we have from them and the relationships that we're building. It's phenomenal. It is awesome to see. And now that I'm seeing all these limited releases, bro. <laughs> what goes into a limited release product, what goes into a limited release is stupid amount of work. Mm -hmm. Not just from like one or two people, the entire company. From the whole conceptualizing, the whole product name, the look, the marketing behind it. Just thinking about that, what the label is going to look like. All of that, and it's limited. It means it's not going to be around forever. Therefore, you're going to spend a lot of time and money and effort into something that's only going to happen one time one time yeah maybe two times bring it back something like that mm -hmm. see the response and guess what if it's only a one-time thing what happens if people don't like that one so you're taking a chance on yourself yeah so we did that because we believe in ourselves and and we're relentless in the fact and we believe in our people we believe in ourselves we believe in our people we believe in our customers we love what we do we know we have great things and we're gonna fucking push the envelope every goddamn fucking time and now, seeing other people, other brands do that as well, bro, they're putting time in too, mm -hmm. putting effort in. Okay. It's fun because I enjoy it because I know what our team is capable of. Mm -hmm. And I love our all of our fucking fans and all the people that follow us. The people that buy one fucking t-shirt, the people that buy one product, the people can, that afford one product a month, whatever it is, all that shit fucking matters. Mm -hmm. And we think about those people on a regular basis. Why? I mean, this is this fuck. This is my favorite one yet. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Other people doing that, it's good to see because that's what life is about. Mm -hmm. Competition is a good thing because then that means everybody's stepping up their game. Yeah. And it's never some. And I take it as uh, now that I see so much of these things, I'm like, good. We're paving a way. Uh, we're paving a new way of doing things for the consumers, for the quality of the the shit that they're putting into their body for the excitement that they have for a new product to drop or a new flavor to drop or something new that's injected into their life in which they really like. The one thing they like to do is go to the gym or do their running or whatever it may be. If that spices up their fucking life, that means that they're going to be a better person at home. That means that they're going to be a better person at work. That means they're going to have that little bit of a fucking edge in the gym. All of that shit adds up to you becoming a better person. So if me... Us, what we do does that for them, motherfucker. We are winning. I love it. So it's just, it's, I saw it. I'm excited. It's good for the industry because it's good for the people. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, I was going to say the same thing. Like, I'm happy to see other companies doing these same things. Oh, yeah. Because it, <laughs> In an industry of like a lot of shit, there's a lot of shit, bro. People are people are gonna learn really, really fast who who's over here and who's over here. Yes, like really fucking fast, like one time. <laughs> there is this industry has always been very lucrative, mm -hmm. okay. And I can't, I can't. Uh, um, <clears throat> there's good people and there's bad people 
in every single industry in, in the world. Wherever you go, there's, there's going to be good people and bad people in your fucking neighborhood. Mm-hmm. There's good people and bad people in your family. Everybody knows fucking Chuck. Uncle Chuck comes over, gets shit-faced, <laughs> you know, causes a bunch of problems, says a bunch of shit he shouldn't say at the holidays. Everybody has these people all over the place, and it's okay. They exist. Mm-hmm. You have to accept that they exist. But uh, And you have to understand that if you don't want to be that or get, like, injected into that, you have to be the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. It's going to take work. It's going to take effort. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take all these things. And um, I think that people learn that really – you can you have to understand that not everybody everywhere is good. Mm-hmm. So with there's companies out there that just have trash trash products, and that's Okay. Uh, they're going to exist. What am I going to do? Talk shit about them and just be like, oh, fuck them. Don't buy them this and that. No, go ahead. You have to learn for yourself. It's like raising a kid. I learned myself. You know how many fucking trash products I took? A lot. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, all of them. I, I've been taking supplements since, uh, well, probably since I was like 15. I was taking protein. I drank a lot of protein powders, Metrex, and uh uh, EAS had Myoplex, the meal replacement packs. Yeah. Was fucking huge into those things. Huge. I thought they were going to fucking make me massive. I took them all the time. My mom would take me. I'd work for my dad, and then they take me to, like, GNC in Lower Borough. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'd spend, like, 150 bucks on shit. I'd be so pumped up, go in there. Bro, I was 15, 16 years old. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, from then, that was 20 fucking years ago. I've been doing this shit like this for 20 years. So, there hasn't been... Bro, I was taking Ultimate Orange back in the day. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Bro, it was fucking nuts. (laughs) Rip Fuel. Fuck yeah. But from Twin Lab. Twin Lab was created by uh, Steve Blackman and his brother. Mm -hmm. Like, Twin Lab was everything. It was everything back in the day. Yeah, late 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rip Fuel. When Rip Fuel and Hydroxy cut legitimately if you just took one pill two pills a day one in the morning one in the afternoon you were getting shredded <laughs> or fucking like legit. oh bro <laughs> no bullshit anybody listening from back in the day was like oh yeah you didn't take more than two or three a day they'd fuck you up oh yeah you took if you took three a day you were wired all fucking day do you remember like a time at least from when you first started following bodybuilding where like supplements weren't even like a thing yet uh, so in the, the industry? No, because I came whenever Muscle Tech and Twin Lab were taking over. Metrex, mm-hmm. EAS, Muscle Muscle Tech, Twin Lab, they were the big ones. Mm-hmm. They were the fucking monsters. Muscle Tech was doing like five hundred million dollars a fucking year at their peak. Five hundred million dollars a year. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Supplements, huh? Five hundred fucking million. <laughs> Bro, they were doing big numbers because they owned it, and HydroxyCut was the most mainstream product, and uh, it worked. Muscle like HydroxyCut worked. Yeah, it was nasty. HydroxyCut uh, or Muscle Tech also owned Zenadrin, uh, which was uh, can't remember the name of the company. Slipped my mind, but Zenadrin was another uh, fat burner, mm-hmm. and it fucking worked because I took that one. I fucking used to buy everything. Yeah, back in the day, but. Um, uh, Twin Lab was big with Rip Fuel. Rip Fuel was everybody at the gym was taking Rip Fuel come some come springtime. So everybody the, at my gym. So like before, because I'm just trying to think of what it was like with like when supplements first like broke out all together. Like where where did you buy them? How did people hear about them? Because the internet wasn't no, around back oh, then. Fuck no, it was magazines. Like even like the first supplement stores, like GNC, dude. You know, it was when GNC was fucking popping. But like we're we're Arnold and like the the guys of like the original elite that started Weider. bodybuilding. No, Joe Weeder. Like there was no supplements. No then. supplements back then. It yeah. was all food and steroids. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and that was when shit was real, when food was actually like organic without even saying it was fucking organic. Yeah. And, right. and steroids were real fucking steroids and not some cheap shit from fucking China. Yeah. They were legit as fuck. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but then Weeder came out with, uh, he was the first one to start doing like a whey protein. Mm-hmm. It, was, uh, it was like flavorless, but it wasn't flavorless. It tasted like fucking cardboard shit. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah. But um, he was the first one. They po- kind of pioneered it. And, um, and then over the years, it just got better and better and better. Uh, I don't remember whenever they, like, pre-workout started becoming a thing. Like, they didn't even call Ultimate Orange, like, a pre-workout. Yeah, that's what I mean. They didn't even have the name. 
No, you just took it before you worked out. Uh huh. It wasn't like a pre-workout. It was take it before you work out. A before workout beverage. <laughs> and it was fucking wild. <laughs> there were people that would take it and be like, hey, dude, this is like a drug. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, okay. And then yeah. you take it and be like. <gasps> Especially like in a world of no monsters or energy drinks and like oh, people no. being taxed already. So Fuck like, yeah, dude. It was nuts. <laughs> it was a fucking shit show. Pure yeah. protein bars were big. Yeah, back I remember, in the uh, I back, those. that was whenever they first started hitting. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I remember. It's come so far, but I remember being like late '90s, late '90s, really getting into the gym. You know, '98, '99, early 2000s. I was fucking hardcore. I graduated high school in '03. Um, '03, I graduated, and then, yeah, and then it just continued to progress. It progressed incredibly Quick. quickly. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and we look at things today, and it's like, man, it's saturated, and uh, and it just got to this fucking. It's a very saturated industry, but there is something there for everybody. Mm-hmm. And like we said in the beginning of this, what we just started this little rant here, uh, things are getting better, mm-hmm. and uh, but you can't you continue to do your research, everybody. You have to do your research yeah. into a product why they use certain ingredients, why things are added, like why we added Pico 2 to our basic series. Because it's a fucking phenomenal ingredient. It's phenomenal. I, we didn't want to revamp Hydraulic and put it in there, so we just added the, our basic series, basics line, because we needed, we thought all these things would be great to sell, and yeah. you'd be able to do your own concoction or add it to Hydraulic and Ignition Switch or 7th Gear. That and, and you're kind of understanding buying it that it doesn't taste the best. So you understand why we wouldn't want to fuck up something like hydraulic that tastes so fucking good on its own. So Okay, so... But it's... For example, yeah, we'll get into this about the, the formulation behind everything. Pico 2. It's mushroom. Yep. A bunch of mushrooms. Yeah. That's all it is. Naturally occurring. And it's awesome. Great product. Everybody should be taking Pico 2, okay? Here's the catch. One gram of Pico 2, from, based on its scientific studies, doesn't really do too much, one gram. Mm-hmm. Well, if you put any more than one gram in a pre-workout, mm. boy, <laughs> tell you what, pretty fucking rough. And uh, but, it, like, put it this way: I do a scoop, I do two scoops in my pre-workout, mm-hmm. and I put two scoops of hydraulic in there, and then like half a scoop of demo day, still has a pretty strong mushroom taste. Yeah, but it's one of those things that, for a quality standpoint, I believe you need to take it. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> it's. It's rough fucking taste. Yeah. So whenever you see it in a pre-workout, what I've seen the most is in like one scoop, there's like one, there's like one gram. One gram. It's not enough. Mm-hmm. It, it's defeating the purpose. It's in there and it's great and it's, it's, it's of some value, but to optimize, they say that you need to take at least two a day, mm-hmm. two to five a day. I'd say two and a half, three. Yeah. It's fucking you, you, after, and it's similar to creatine. You can, you <clears throat> They say you can use a loading phase. There's different studies out there to use a loading phase and not use a loading phase. The loading phase, people were taking like fucking like five grams a day, mm. more, six, seven grams a day. Like spread it out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, throughout, yeah, the, throughout yeah. the whole day. Yeah. So you drink it multiple times a day. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think uh, I've been doing, I do two, two to two and a half scoops every fucking day. Mm-hmm. And you can just do it a little bit and wash it down and use a chaser or put it into the pre-workout like I do with with a good amount of flavor with Demo Day carbohydrate powder. Mm-hmm. Um, and it'll mask it some. But uh, whenever you see it in a product and you see people use it, it's like they're using as little as possible because whenever they use a full dose, boy, does it taste like shit. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and that's what makes it very difficult about, about this industry. And not many people understand that all of these things – uh, they to use the recommended dosage, it will change the the flavor. It will have a it will change the consistency, the texture, mm-hmm. how it clumps in a can. And people are like, <clears throat> why do things clump in a can? And why th- why this? Like Hydromax. Whenever you use Hydromax, motherfucker, it's going to clump in your pre workout. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. I, I, it makes me feel uncomfortable, just because then I feel like it's it's inconsistent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's inconsistent in the can. Whereas if you use a glister pump, it doesn't do that as much. Right. It won't drag as much moisture. Science. And that's, and that's the part. There is, uh, I'm a bro science guy. You know, I love bro lifting. Mm-hmm. Bro, bro, bro splits. Uh, 
and you know everybody's always going to have something to say about it. However, it works for me. It works for me, and I've become successful based on my own concepts and reading and watching and listening and talking to all these other pros over the years. And the only way to actually be able to do like something great is to do it to your fullest ability. And just because it has was it, what you want to do isn't written in a fucking book doesn't mean it won't work. Some people just might not have the same mindset as you. Mm-hmm. However, when it comes to ingredients and food, <clears throat> there's pretty strong science to it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that there's not science to lifting. Power lifters and strong men basing their sh- stuff on actual numbers and calculations and like scientific methods. Yeah, I can't disagree with that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you see that freak come along and you're like, you don't make sense. <laughs> Why are you so strong? I'm bigger than science. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! No, it's dude. That yeah, that, that is a real thing. Like you just get a freak athlete, and like they just completely like dis- like disrupt everything. Yeah, goes against all the all the things that have ever been said, and everybody's trying to figure out. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like, hey man, every now and then you just run into a bad motherfucker that makes no sense, and you're like, you're an alien. <laughs> Mr. O'Hearn. <laughs> he, listen, the video he posted yesterday. Fuck him. If that's from right now. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know if they're from right now or if they're from a year ago or two years ago. Look, I don't care. You look the same. He is so fucking big right now. It's insane. It's like possible. I don't know. How are you over 50 years old and look like that? I don't know, but he is rock hard. Mm-hmm. It's granite. Uh-huh. I want to touch him. I don't know. Yeah, I want to touch him too. Like, I just want to see what's going on in there. Is that real? I, I have know no it's real. fucking idea. Yeah. I mean, I tell you what. One of the craziest things I've ever seen was Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler in the off season. Mm-hmm. Those two blew my fucking mind. Yeah. Seeing Ronnie Coleman off season, three hundred and twenty, three hundred thirty fucking pounds was one of the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. I believe it was the O two or O three. Mr. Pittsburgh, whenever they came in, mm-hmm. it was in the heyday. It's like right whenever their rivalry started. It might have been 04. Mm-hmm. Um, they came into Pittsburgh. First weekend in May was Mr. Pittsburgh every year. Bro, oh, Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, both over 300 fucking pounds. Monsters. F- fucking, I've never seen anybody to date like Ronnie Coleman in person. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life legit alien looking dude and i'm like like it was whenever he was kind of fat he's off season Mm -hmm. and like it didn't look real like i remember him signing the autograph and watching his bicep like move as he's signing and i'm like like that shit's just hanging on there and jay cutler walking through the fucking audience and i was right behind him when he was walking he's fucking calves bro they look like hams and i'm like (laughs) <laughs> how do you what? get it all in there how's that even possible there's a picture that i have with my friend joe uh we went to the pittsburgh and i was in i think joe might have this picture i fucking wish i still had it, it was me jay and joe and fucking it was back that was that weekend yeah, fuck it had to be motherfucker it had to be oh three had to be and uh and he's just fucking massive. It's before I started taking any fucking gear. It was right when I was, it was, I was 17, 18 years old. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Nuts. Monster. How, how tall is Jay and Ronnie? 5'9 and 5'10 or 5'11. Okay. Yeah, Jay's not a tall guy. Yeah. He's just, bro, in his heyday, freak. I saw a video of Ronnie, like, warming up backstage yesterday on Instagram. And... And then it looked like they all got the call, like it was time to go out. And like he marched out, like first out, and then everyone else like lined up behind him. But when he turned around and started walking, you were like, okay, th- there is no competition here. That's how it used Th- to it's be. It's Ronnie. <laughs> it used to be, it used to be like at the presser, at the presser, the press conference, mm-hmm. like everybody just, when, he, when Ronnie was murdering shit, everybody kind of knew like Ronnie's going to win. Who's coming in second place? And then that's whenever the rivalry started, whenever Jay Cutler showed up and fucking blew everybody's doors off. Because the year before, two years before that time, he was like 15th. And then Jay came in eighth place the year before that. And then the next year, he came and everybody's like, holy fuck. Where the fuck did Jay come from? 
Like he was eighth last year, and now he's like battling for first place. And all of a sudden, everybody's like, "There's a new motherfucker in town." Yeah. And then from there on out, like it was Jay and Ronnie. Jay and Ronnie, because Jay won the Jay started winning the Arnold Classics, mm -hmm. and Ronnie was just running shit. He was you know King Ronnie. So, oh man, was it cool? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking monsters. Freaks. And back then, like you said, there wasn't much internet. Mm -mm. There wasn't a whole lot of internet, so it was all based on magazines. It was all based on word of mouth and shows and guest posings and appearances and all that. And now, I mean, look at today, 2020. There's not even fucking shows for these people to guest pose at because they're going to guest pose for nobody. Mm -hmm. They could do their own guest posing on, online. I tell you this right now. There is nothing like seeing a fucking monster bodybuilder in person. There's nothing like it. The internet does these motherfuckers no justice. Mm -hmm. Pictures don't do them no justice. You see these fucking people in person, you're like, <laughs> bro. Even me at my at my fucking peak time, fucking five foot six, two hundred and fifty two fucking pounds. That was a pretty wild look. Fucking huge legs, crazy legs. The whole the fucking shelf. yeah, scary. Like you, you look at someone and they're like, you're like. How do I that, get this? How does it how does it come out to here? It comes out. It is like your hoodie like hold, falls like holds it's like out from your body. That's why I found it all so fascinating yeah. because I found out that I was actually really good at it. Yeah. When you find out like uh, like I loved it so much and I respond so well to training, I respond well to fucking everything that it that it is. It's almost like I was meant to do this shit. Mm -hmm. And I loved it so much and it just clicked. Like, there's people out there that love this shit so much, but they just don't have the same genetics. Mm -hmm. So they got to work twice as hard. And it's just, and then you see people that have genetics, that have a passion for it, and know how to manipulate everything <clears throat> with their body and with chemicals and with fucking every, food, you name it. And it's all, and all can come together. It's like, whoa. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Yeah. I love it. <sighs> Crazy. It is a wild sport. Very, 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 very wild industry. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Mm -hmm. And it's just like it's mind blowing. You can someone can walk around and hold on to all of that. Well, that's what makes it all dangerous. Well, I know, and everyone knows that. Yeah. But it's still just insane. Because like I, I, I know what, I know what a few days of endurance training. And like lack of food, how quick it just comes off of me. But then to hold hundreds of pounds over what your normal walk around weight should be is bodybuilding is about consistency. Mm -hmm. It is about consistency at everything you're doing to be a bodybuilder, and not like consistently mediocre. <laughs> Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, I, th I think point. that's, like, a big misconception. Like, Great oh, point. yeah, I go to the gym every day. No, 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 It's no. like, no, dude. It's consistently <laughs> pushing your body and your abilities all day, every day. Yep. Like, bro, the food. Like, me, whenever I was 250 pounds, the, 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 the level of intensity in the gym every day was out of control. Mm -hmm. You look like a fucking psychopath. You're like, didn't you just train heavy yesterday? Yeah, I did. I'm going to train heavy again today. I'm going to do fucking heavy legs tomorrow. Mm. Excuse me? Yeah, I like it. And then and then every morning it's like, what do you eat for breakfast? Oh, I eat eight whole eggs, uh, eight whole eggs, about a cup of oatmeal, a banana, and then I also do about like 25-gram carbohydrate shake with uh, my aminos and um, maybe like a piece of peanut butter toast and Probably put some jelly on it, too. Excuse me? That's what you eat every morning? Yeah. Then, you know. Like after my shake, though. Yeah, that's, that's an hour after. That's an hour and a half after my fucking 700 calorie shake. <laughs> so you eat like you eat like 3,000 calories by 9 a.m. Oh, yeah. 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 Big day. Big day. <laughs> what do you what's your other meals? Uh, about eight ounces of chicken and uh, two cups of white rice. It's my three and four meals. What's what's after that? Well, then I have uh, usually like a red meat and a sweet potato. And then before I go to bed, I eat some more eggs. I have a protein shake in between one of those meals too. With a piece of fruit, you know, keep the gut moving. Mm -hmm. 
a couple rice cakes. So how many calories do you eat a, eat a day? I'm like six, 6,500 calories. If the thing is, is if you want to keep that weight, you have to. That's that consistency. Have to, yeah. Because all of a sudden, if you're like, oh, okay, you miss a fu- you miss a couple meals, or you miss a meal consistently, missing a meal every day, I would go from that 250, 249, all the way down to 243. Yeah. Within a week, mm-hmm. because you're pushing the envelope to continue to grow, you're forcing your body to grow. It's crazy. Crazy. I love it. It's so fucked up. It is, but at, at 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 any high level of any sport or any anything, it's like that, for sure. Fuck yeah! Because, like you said, that you you're off two or three meals over a course of four days. It fucks all your shit up. Oh I, yeah! I, I missed a meal Monday, Tuesday. My workouts were shit this week. Mm-hmm. Shit. Mm-hmm. I was underhydrated. Shit. Mm-hmm. Weight is like all over the fucking place. Yep. In a bad way. Yep. You know? In in whenever we talk about consistency and whenever you see people or other bodybuilders or other top athletes talk about like how important all that is, it's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. That's why you see people carrying meals with them everywhere. That's why I would carry meals with me everywhere and then have a backup meal in there in case I get stuck somewhere and need to eat because I'm not missing a fucking meal. Yeah, or everyone's going to dinner somewhere you can't get anything on yeah. the menu. Nope, yeah. come with me. Yeah, yeah. you know, like a lot of people are like, you know, I, I want advice on this and that, and it's like, well, here it is. And they're like, well, yeah, everyone says that. It's because well, it's true. Well, yeah, it's because it's fucking true, dude. Yeah. I don't see you carrying your meal bag around with you right now. I don't now. see you carrying water around with you. Yep. Uh, what's in your gym bag? I don't have a gym. You don't have a gym bag. You know, I, I could never really fully understand it till I've been doing this, this training for, for the Ironman. Oh, yeah. I could never really fully understand that level of commitment and, and devotion to something that isn't work, that isn't your family. That You know what I mean? That's just so much bigger than what you are as a person. It's, it's something that uh, only a select group of people ever do. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't mean that you're better than anybody or anything like that. It means that you're experiencing something so unique that so few people do. Mm -hmm. I'm not running a fucking Ironman. I'm never going to. Mm. I'm not running a marathon. Mm -mm. Nope, not going to happen. I do bodybuilding. I loved it. I've lived it. So therefore, I want to encourage people to do other things like it. Mm -hmm. I want to encourage people to do, do an Ironman. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah, dude. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, go run a marathon. Fuck yeah. Go start your own business. Do whatever you want to do. It's going to take sacrifice, and it's going to change you as a person, and it's up to you on what the outcome's going to be. Mm-hmm. It's all up to you. It's not up to nobody else. It's not up to me. You know what I mean? That, yeah. And that's the great part about it because it's so unique and so incredible that fuck yeah, dude. Live it. Do it. It's going to be great. You're going to talk about it forever. Yep. You're going to do incredible things. People are going to ask you about it. And along the way, you're going to learn a whole lot about people. All of a sudden, people are going to say, so why are you doing this? Why do you do this to yourself? Excuse me? What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> why am I do- I like it, cocksucker. Yeah. My question to you is, why haven't you done anything with yourself? Mm-hmm. Don't go criticizing me for something that I wanted to do and love to do and it's exciting to me. It may be hard, it may be grueling sometimes, and I may bitch about it here and there, but I want to see what I can do with myself. Mm-hmm. And some people like to experience it one time, some people like to make a lifestyle out of it. Whatever it may be, it, if it makes you a better person, experience life and do great things, all for it. Yeah. There's people out there that can't pick one goddamn thing to do. They fucking do everything. I don't care. Cool. Tell me about it. Like Artemis. That yeah. fucking psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Bro. eating shrooms, jumping out of airplanes. Fucking riding bikes in the desert, then swimming in the fucking ocean. It's kind of like I'm All like. On the same day. I'm like, I'm like, bro, where the fuck is your head at? What are you doing? Then I'm like, I know exactly where it is. It's in the fucking clouds, living life. Yep. Bro's out fucking doing, I'm going to go swimming in the ocean today. And I'm going to jump out of a fucking plane. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Fucking right, man. Bro, you can think this dude's the weirdest guy on the planet. Probably is. But 
He may have fucking figured it out. He, uh, had, I, he may have figured life out. So here's my thing. He he may have figured it out, but I don't have fucking time to do all that goddamn shit. <laughs> no. I don't have time to shit in my fucking toilet alone. There's at least one kid asking me something, fucking getting text messages. I don't know what the fuck. It's like I'm in a different world of building businesses and fucking three kids and this and that. Yep. But like whenever you see people doing something like that, it's kind of like I'm like, man. Motherfucker is just like all over the place. He's just in When it. you said he ate shrooms and jumped out of an airplane, I got a little concerned. I'm almost positive he did, dude. I mean, it was the same day. He showed a baggie of mushrooms, and then he was also jumping out of airplanes. So I know mushrooms last a long time. I, I doubt he did it afterwards. I don't know. There's no way. <laughs> Bro, listen. Bro, if- the dude goes from the sky into the ocean in the same day. Like I feel like that alone is like it's, uh, they tell you not to do that. I think it's diving and flying in the same oh, day. the altitudes. Go. Yeah, but, like, the fact that he'll, like, go jump out of a plane in the morning, ride in the desert, his bike, then he'll swim in the ocean, run sprints in the sand, box at night, lift weights, <laughs> and then have a sick outfit on at the end of the day. <laughs> Who are you, dude? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? All in California, which is a fucking goddamn shit, mess right now. Shit box. Ah, man. (laughs) Wow, that would be intense. Be a lot. Bro, people are nuts. Fuck yeah, people are crazy. Do some crazy shit. And and it's, I mean, and that's what I love about life. It's really tough. It's really difficult. But you are the one that decides everything. You're the one that decides everything you're doing, mm-hmm. not anybody else. Oh, I got to do this and I got to do that. Well, yeah, not really, though. If you don't want to go to work, you don't have to don't go to go. work. You ain't going to make no fucking money. Yep. But, like, you could do whatever you want. You could be a vagabond. You can fucking be a drifter. Whatever you want to do. But, like, there's going to be there's just going to be consequences for what you want. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm going to work my fucking balls off for a while and then... I'm going to figure out what else I like to do in life and then just keep living. I got three kids. I'm excited. I want to create opportunity for them. I got a son now. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what my fucking oldest is going to do. All I know is, is I'm going to create opportunity for them and I want to do great things. I want to make sure my communities do good, do a good job. Mm-hmm. Everybody thinks that it's all about fucking all about shit that's bigger than them. And it's not. It's about focusing on what you're good at. It's about focusing on your people. It's about focusing on your local community. It's about focusing on what you have control over. Mm -hmm. And that's your life. Good times. Mm. Coffee's good today again. Fucking great. Gun dog grind. Yep. Ferocity 10 gets you 10% off. Does it? I don't know. Maybe people should just. I think they they watch it too, so maybe they'll quick make it. Ah, yeah. Fucking assholes, 10. We'll do 15. (laughs) (laughs) They hate our guts now. (laughs) I better get my fucking mug. That's all I have to say. They're running behind us. I tell you what, it gets better every day you don't have one. Son of a bitch. Shane just sitting there. I don't have one either. Shane took a day off from coffee today. I did. Has a Red Bull. I love Red Bulls. You know why? It's because he's like a big European soccer guy and mm-hmm. stuff, and like Red Bull's big with sponsoring soccer or football, mm-hmm. football, football, football. Yeah, they have their own team. Yeah. Red Bull does. Mm-hmm. Um, Excuse me. Yeah, it's called uh, <laughs> what? Les Peg. I don't. Know, I said that. I butchered that. It's German. Oh, yeah. it's German. German for Shane's an idiot. No, that's what it's called. Oh. He's like, no, Seth. No, I'm tired wrong. of your shit. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. <laughs> oh, man. No, but uh, I will say this. We have a new, The new, we were refer, referring to the Axe and Sledge and everything. We do have a new product, a new flavor of a product, mm-hmm. and the rebranding of it, Swamp Beast. Yes. Might Swamp it. Beast might be like my least favorite flavor out of everything that we fucking make, and somehow it is a top seller. It's because it's probably one of our best flavors. Fuck you. 
I, I will say this. It's the most unique. <laughs> yeah. It is the most unique flavor in the industry, I believe. I don't think – I've never tasted anything like it. When it first came through, I was like, this is fucking dog shit. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but it's quite refreshing and very unique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I might like it. No, I don't. Fuck this shit. Uh -uh. And then everybody's like, no, it's fire. It's a great flavor. And I'm like, I've never had anything like it. Appleberry. Yeah. And, uh, and then it, we ended up like, yeah, let's do this. And then Swamp Beast came along because everything that we do has a fuckery name to it. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much everything. Almost everything. Uh, and it became a big seller in the grind. Mm -hmm. like Huge. Out of all the flavors, it's sometimes one that does like top three. Mm -hmm. Still blows my fucking mind some months, but... <laughs> People like it. So we've been uh, toying with the idea of bringing it into a new uh, new flavor and, or a new product, and we are. Mm -hmm. Hydraulic. Yes. Swamp Beast Hydraulic will be available next week. Am I allowed to say that, Shane? Yep. All right. We have a mock-up somewhere. Where's Do we? That? Yeah. It's pretty fucking cool. Labels murdered. Should I go get it? You can. If you Somebody want. go get I'm it. I'm going to go grab it. Cool. Um, it's in the marketing room. But, yeah, we... um. This flavor, we've been looking for a good flavor of hydraulic. Again, hydraulic is a pretty difficult flavor or a pretty difficult product to flavor. Um, and uh, turns out, whenever we bring samples in, the hydro or the swamp beast flavor of hydraulic turned out to be one that just fucking was on point, awesome, and tasted just like it. And it works well with the ingredients in hydraulic. It's pretty good. I'm excited. Me too. I like it. Wait till you see the pictures. You didn't see the pictures. I didn't yet. see the pictures from I it. I could have got electrocuted yesterday. You almost died. I could have. Man, I didn't drop it though. I was holding a power Were you strip in the water. Power strip. Yep. Elect. Yeah. Putting your life on the line for the company. There might have been a fog machine. You didn't die though. No. Man, no. that's exciting. It was awesome. It's pretty exhilarating. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, you're holding all this while you're in the water. Did you at least have rubber boots in the water? I did. So you I had the rubber boots. boots in the water? Yeah. You're safe. But you if I would have that. fell. You'd have died. Uh, yep. Um, yeah. You wouldn't have fell, though. No. You're good on your feet. Mm-hmm. Oh, he has the other gifts. What do you got behind your back? Nothing. Here, everybody, look how cool this looks. Man, I love the rebranding. Mike did a great job. Mmm. Fucking right. Swamp Beast. Appleberry. One of the, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. Really good hydraulic flavor. Like I was telling everybody about the ingredients, how it's hard to flavor yeah. hydraulic. Yep. Appleberry works fucking great. It has a, such a, the unique flavor is, what, is, why, why, is why it's good. It's very refreshing. It is. Mm -hmm. I fucking hated it before. I mean, still kind of hate it. So, I, I might, Steve DeSrocher might kick my ass again. That's his a, shit. Oh, bro. Yeah. Fucking, he just gives me a ton of shit. Every time I post Shark Biter, it being my favorite. <clears throat> shit. So I have, I just got hit with two new items while I was in the hallway. Nice, they came in. And uh, I don't know when these are going to be available, but sometime they will be. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So. Which, well, I don't know which ones we have. <gasps> oh, yeah. I know when they're available. <sighs> we got at, new water bottles. Look at this color. I fucking love it. Oh, nice strap. Oh, thank fucking God these are these are nice. Yeah, nice strap, logo there. Oh, this is fucking sick. You can put an alcohol oh, in it. I mean, water. Insignia, they got that on there for us. Water and pop and soda. Jack and Diet. It's a big one. Take it for the road. Nice roadie. How many? Man. 1,300 mLs. I'll be doing some converting later. So, new accent sledge water bottles. Big gulps. So we're fucking, we're going to, oh, we might get sued if we call them big gulps. Yeah, I can't do that. 7-Eleven might 7 -Eleven. Come Call them Bee Gees. <laughs> get the Bee Gees, the bubble guts. I got the Bee Gees. Big gulps, fucking huh? right. Large gulps. Oh, man, that color's sick. Let me see it. Also, BPA free. You're welcome. <laughs> Bro, I like them. I like these. You can put anything cold in here. No hots. Where'd you guys get those? Huh? Where'd you guys get those? Internet. I'm proud. I know you are. <laughs> what do you think uh, this is? Hmm? I'm pumped. I know when they're available. Oh. I know exactly when they're going to be available. Me too. 
They're probably going to be available like sometime in November. Mm -hmm. Like after Thanksgiving. But before like the holidays. Yeah. Oh. Well, like after oh. after Thanksgiving holiday, meaning I said holidays. Yeah, what do you think holidays is uh, probably around Black Friday? <laughs> um, <laughs> Either before or after. These are sick. I'm yeah. fucking pumped. Yep. Stupid cool. I like the Coyote Camel Canyon. Brown. Brown. Mm -hmm. Khaki Coyote Camel Canyon. Brown. There's like a texture on here, too. I don't I like know it. if you viewers at home can see that, but <clears throat> welcome for that, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I'm fucking pumped. Man, those are nice. Mm -hmm. Jugs. Jugs. Big jugs. <laughs> BJs. Oh, let's do that. Look at the jugs on that. I'm going to fight. I named them on the website, so I'll call them Big Jugs. Big Jugs. Yep. Whoop, whoop. I like Big Jugs. I like Big big Butts. Big Jugs. Big Buttockses. You motorboat and son of a... Let me get my lips in there. Oh, man. Wow, very parched today. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm just hungry. I'm very hungry. I'm always hungry now. I gained some weight. I don't know how much weight I gained now. I would love a sit-down breakfast every morning. Really? Mm-hmm. No shit, huh? Yeah. Like, like, a, like, with every food group, I would love that every day. Every day? Mm-hmm. You know you can't do that every day. Well, you can. I can. But I can't. I mean, I can. No, I like I would it. love an omelet and some sort of bread with some fruit, some like breakfast meat. Not going to disagree with you. Mm -hmm. I think I could eat uh, a four egg, egg, a four egg bacon and cheese omelet mm -hmm. with some fresh fruit. Dry toast. And dry toast every morning. Mm -hmm. wonder if the wagon wheel get that for us every day i haven't been there yet i might stop in and see if they can just do a we can do a drive-by every morning to go every to morning. go every morning we could pay for the month yeah we'll just whatever whatever you guys need whatever you guys want to do just as long as i can have a sit-down breakfast and i'm going to take your plates i'll bring them back but mm -hmm. i'd like a glass plate i don't want to i don't want a foam container i hate eating out of styrofoam I'm not a fan not a big fan unless it's barbecue <laughs> and i feel like it's supposed to be yeah yeah i always liked those uh like the chicken barbecue, like fundraising dinners. Oh, yeah. I always liked that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, boy, did this year suck. <laughs> Felt like I didn't do anything. Because we didn't. All we did was fucking work. Just fucking worked and... A lot of video games. A lot of nothing like... I didn't even play video games. Nothing like no festivals. I love festivals and concerts. Nothing. Sporting events. Yeah, like without political bullshit. I'm tired of it. I can't wait for this shit to be over. It's not going to be over for a while. Trump's going to win again. They fucking hate this dude. I love Trump's dance moves. How about that dude, huh? Bro, he throws down. How the fuck is he still doing all this shit? How the fuck are these people doing this? They're seventies. They're in their seventies. I'm not going to be fucking alive in my seventies. <laughs> He's. He's just jumping around there, fucking Pence r sprinting out of the plane. Pence is fucking, he's on a new TRT program for sure. Fuck yeah. He's laying, log, he's laying the pipe with his wife. He's fucking running marathons. <laughs> fucking shit up. How about 50 Cent being like, I don't want to be 20 Cent. 62%. That's fucking funny. Everybody giving him shit about it. He's like, I don't care if Trump don't like black people. Fucking 62%. Bro. His page is funny. It's fucking hilarious. There's some funny content on there. The fact that he's saying all that shit like that and people are so pissed off about it. It's like, man, like any like if you were cel if you're a celebrity and you go against like big tech and and fucking the Democrats and the blue, like they're fucking like all over you. Yeah. <laughs> but like or I don't know. So divided. I don't like it. Such a shit box fucking mess. <laughs> I miss that coffee mug. <laughs> don't be a shit box mess. Yeah. Shit box mess. Imagine shit in a box and it like being a mess. And shake it. I like kind of didn't acknowledge the first few times I heard you say that. Like when uh, we first met. 
And then I was like, okay, like you got to explain this one to me. Shitbox mess. You say it so nonchalantly. It's like, it's just like, <laughs> just a fucking mess. You know, shit in a box. If you ever shit in a box, you get it. Like working construction, working in houses. Like, I mean, I, that's what I grew up doing. That's where you're shitting. In the job didn't have a fucking porta potty. You're finding a fucking drywall bag. You're finding anything. Man. Oh, yeah. Whenever we were plastering houses and you shit in a bucket. You shit in a bucket. Boy, does that suck. It's fucking horrible. Can't say I've ever done that. No? No. Uh, shit in the woods. One time. Yeah. Shit in a bucket. Shit in a bag. Shit in a box. It's fucking horrible. Every construction guy's like, yep, yeah. in there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then while you're doing it, you're working with complete fucking degenerate dickheads mm-hmm. that are fucking with you while you're trying to shit in a bag because you're trying to shit in a bag. Yeah. Because it's going to be funny. Yep. And if you shit on yourself, we're going to make fun of you. I hate that. Fucking no. I just love my privacy. <laughs> like like the show. <laughs> just, just loves fucking with me when I'm taking a shit here. <laughs> Anytime you're taking a Anytime dump. Anytime I take a dump in this fucking bathroom at work, <laughs> door opens. I'm like, here we go. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Pat. How's it going in there? Oh, well, you know, shit's coming out of my asshole. Oh, yeah, pretty good. Well, good. Well, I'll see you out there. I'm like, son of a bitch. It just keeps it going a few seconds too long. And oh, I'm like, damn it. You know, when, you're just taking, of... when you're taking a dump and you're like mid-fucking turd coming out and somebody walks in, you're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> like, I know it doesn't smell good and I know it sounds fucking horrendous. Well, my whole world got flipped upside down on Monday because I usually use the ladies' room here because there's no women on yeah. our side of the building. It's nice and clean. There's a handicap stall that I'll use every time. Pretty I don't big. give a shit. Yeah. And now we have a female working in the building. Which is dangerous. Which is dangerous. Also <laughs> fucked up my whole shit schedule. I haven't shit at 2 o'clock yet this week. I am not kidding. I am not fucking kidding. I have not shit at work this entire fucking week. Oh, is that fucked up? Yep. It's throwing everything off. Fucking y'all up. Yep. Might have so, to get rid of her already. So I'm going to have to let her go today. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make the men's room, men's and women's co-ed, and then the, the women's bathroom is going to be Bob's. <laughs> I might just start using it. If I hear the door, it's like, hey, Lydia. <laughs> like, I know it's you. What's up, Lyd? I'm in here right now. She'll be like, okay, I came to shit too. I'm like, God damn it. Fuck my life. <laughs> You'll be like, all right, I'm fucking out of here. I'm going home. Oh my God! Bob leaves every day at one thirty. He's gonna take a shit. At Where's home. Bob? He ran home to take a shit. <laughs> Lydia, right Lydia likes to shit at the same time as Bob. <laughs> <laughs> she calls him her shit partner. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make that a thing. That's fucking funny. That's really funny. I'm sweating. God damn it! <laughs> yep. <laughs> Shit partners. I'm very private with that, dude. That's just my time. See, the, the thing is, like, I grew up with I grew up with so many siblings, mm-hmm. and I grew up uh, grew up playing sports. Uh, you just I don't know. It's just you just you had to. You just I don't know. I'd really like I was I was actually I was eating a piece of chicken. All right, I was walking around eating my chicken out of a bag, and uh, I'm eating my chicken. I'm like, oh, I gotta pee. So I walk into the bathroom. Walk into the bathroom and I'm taking a leak with a piece of chicken in my hand. Okay, Mike and Pat saw me walk in, so they come in. They walk in. They're like, "Hey, how's it going in here?" I'm like, "Bro, you're not gonna phase me. I'm literally eating a piece of chicken while taking a piss. <laughs> like, you want to see my dick? I don't care." They're like, "All right, dude, see you." I'm like, "I'm not Bob." They're like, "You freak." I've eaten taking uh, during bodybuilding. I'm just like, "Yeah, I gotta take a shit. I'm eating my eggs." <laughs> Let's go take a shit and eat eggs at the same time. I gotta get it in before eight. <laughs> you fucking disgusting bastard. Oh, uh. <laughs> there's a little bit of a degen in me. <laughs> I'm efficient. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, efficiency. <laughs> I couldn't do that. No, no dude, it's no. fucked up. But at the same time, like, uh, you know how we're speaking pretty freely on here. <laughs> but <laughs> like we don't like, ever. <laughs> like nobody else is listening. Uh, don't but hear it after. <laughs> I don't really. Uh, that's just. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't really phase me. 
just part of it all. I mean, I it doesn't I, completely bother me, but no, like no, no. it's. But I don't want. I don't like if if I walk in and somebody's taking a dump, and I'm like, anywhere could be anywhere, and I'm like, oh man, you know how bad that fucker is. That that guy's like, God damn, just leave so I can take a shit. He's waiting for the door to you to leave. And he's like, oh, oh yep, oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, that is it is. You, whenever you see stuff like from, uh, like at certain. <laughs> What was it? Is it like certain colleges or where there's no doors on the stalls and there's just like toilet after toilet? Yeah. Man, would that fucking suck. Do you remember at, uh, I thought it was the, I've never seen this anywhere fucking else other than, uh, fuck, what was the high school that, uh, oh, uh, the natural northern. Yeah. What high that, school was that? Lakewood. 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 Lakewood and Cleveland. Bro, the, the stalls had, it was like a shoulder height wall in between. It's like, yeah. here's a here's a toilet. So at the high school, there was no stall walls and there's no stall doors. You walked into like a like a like a four foot high or three. It was probably three foot high brick wall with a stall in the middle of it, and like the stalls were separated by three foot high brick walls. So if I took a shit, I'm here taking a shit, and I look over to you. You're sitting in the stall. And there's a brick wall right here. Like we're looking at each other. Like, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah. You're hey. just right there. Like, like no Jesus. stall door on the front. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. So, like, somebody walks by you, they see your, like, shit around your ankles. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, Fuck if you. you walk by someone like that, like, and you look, are you the fucking asshole? Right? You're the asshole Listen, if you look. if I was in high school, right, high school is like a time of growing as an individual. And if you're, like, a shy kid, like most of us were, and, like, you walk in... And you got to take a shit. You got to shit like that. And then somebody comes walking in to take a piss in the urinal that's legitimately right in fucking front in front of you. You're like, <sighs> he's going to be like, what's up, bro? Like, that's how it was. It was like seeing someone sitting in a room. What if, fucked you're, up. what if you're like mid-wipe when someone walks in? You're like, oh, I didn't even think about oh, that. Like you're Jesus. mid-wipe and you like make eye contact. You're like, oh. I'd be like, so you're wiping your ass now, huh? <laughs> Oh, oh, you're a squatter, I'd huh? just be like... You said, huh? You know, stand her. Stand her. Me too. <laughs> a good man. <laughs> good man. <laughs> so the urinals were right in front where you're sitting? Bro, it was rough. What if the dude in front was just a complete fucking jerk off and just pulled his pants all the way down? Oh, fucking oh, moved your oh ass. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what goes on in high school anymore because it's been 20 years, 20 plus years. But like when we were in high school, like... Like, there was a group, the group of the jocks were just complete fucking, like, they were off the wall. The dudes I went to high school with were fucking crazy. Yep. Like, they were nuts. Like, fucking handfuls. Yeah, dude. Yeah, we had some. So, I could see them just like, <laughs> like, like, listen. If that was at our high school, <laughs> I could see, like, a, a select group of guys, like, Manifest, McKillop. Like, those two, if you were taking a shit and they walked in the bathroom and you were taking a shit there, they were going to come and shake you. Yeah, they're going to fuck with <laughs> they you. They were going to fuck you, like, fuck with you. Like, you were sitting there, they're going to fucking throw you around and, like, move you around. Like, fucking, like, get off of me, I'm shitting. <laughs> like, yeah, they definitely would have. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> fuck. Uh, fucking mayhem. Man. It's my time. Fucking goddamn, them dudes were nuts. Nuts. We had this one dude in high school. Like every time he went to piss, like at a urinal, like pants and undies at his ankles every time. And he'd like pull his shirt up in the back, like his whole ass out. <laughs> nice. And he'd dude. be like leaning up against the wall and like you'd walk in and he'd be like, hey, <laughs> ready for practice? <laughs> yeah, dude. Make it fun. It'd be awesome. Oh, dude, there was a couple people that were just crazy. That dude was stupid fucking good at fighting, too. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. He just didn't fuck with them. Yeah. A couple of those, too. Yep. He got tased by the cops and didn't go down. Oh, boy. Yeah. He just ran right through it. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah, there was, we had a group of people that were just fucking yep. characters. I love it. Yeah. Man, high school must suck now. There's, like, no high school, coronavirus. You can't even fucking, like, go to school full time. You're not allowed to fuck off in the hallways. 
I would do so bad, like in a public school setting now. Oh my god. Oh my. I. I we did. I, we did. Fuck. You could go do anything. Like, like in the middle of class. Like, like, dude, you think about like high school, like just like playing grab ass with your girl in high school, mm-hmm. like in the hallways. Now kids are wearing masks. You can't even like jack a kid in the fucking in the lockers. Remember that with your buddies? All of a sudden, dude, you'd be walking, like walking with your girl or something, and all of a sudden, your fucking buddy would throw you into the fucking lockers, dent the fucking locker, call you a bitch, and then run mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. You're like, cocksucker, I want to get you back. Yep. Like, man. Like I'd keep all my weed in my locker. <laughs> You know, in case I needed to smoke some during the day or someone wanted to buy some. Can't keep it in my car. I can't go out to my car. <laughs> not allowed. Keep it in the locker. Also not allowed to sell weed or even have weed at school. Even have weed, period. Yeah, you, you couldn't. No, they didn't want that there. No, I'm not at school. I'd keep some in my gym locker, too. Oh, my God. Yep. And I'd, li- I'd like to think back then that no one ever smelled it or knew anything. Nobody knew anything, Bob. They, but they never said anything, ever. Because it's just weed. Yeah. Okay, if I see a kid... Okay, so my kid's getting older. 13. Uh, Alan's not into drugs. I could see her. I could see her drinking and being wild, though. So it's going to occur. I know it. You know how fucking crazy I was? Mm-hmm. Jesus, God in heaven. <laughs> I don't regret anything, but I regret a couple of fucking things. <laughs> but um, uh, I, I think that, like, whenever she starts, she's going to be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Like, those years are going to come, and it's not like I'm going to be like, hey, I don't know what you're doing. It's going to be one of those things that's like, as a parent, you just have to decide on how far is too far and when you step in. And I like to think that I do a pretty good job of edu- educating my child about what life is. And how things are going to go. Mm-hmm. And the outcomes from certain decisions that you can make. Because 20 years ago, whenever I was making them, the consequences were much different. Much different. Yeah. Than they are right now. Big time. For God's sakes, you could fucking... We're getting censored for saying coronavirus on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. God only knows. I used to fucking drive around the neighborhood and have kicked in the ass. Mm-hmm. You know, do dumb shit. Yep. Things that shouldn't happen, but... I, Things are way different now. Mm -hmm. So, man, dumb shit. And they have phones. We didn't have phones. Like, we we never, we would be like, hey, we're going to do this really stupid fucking thing, like run around the neighborhood naked and put dick prints all over people's storm doors. Mm -hmm. That was funny. Okay. Today, that'd be like fucking, you're a fucking sex offender. You're on a list. You're on a list now Mm -hmm. because you were being funny streaking. Like streaking was a huge fucking deal back in like the 70s and 80s and 90s. It was funny. Mm -hmm. Now you're a registered sex offender. Possibly a felony. Two (laughs) years probation. (laughs) It's like, fuck, dude. Like, good God. It's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Man. Man, they're... Kids aren't doing that fun shit, are they? No. Or are they? I don't know. I don't know. See, like that's what I mean. Like, d- like did we? Did people? Did adults really know we were doing these things back then? Or like? I mean, my parents did. They knew we were fucking ass bags. My, my mom, dad. My, my mom didn't know shit. My dad was a pretty wild fucker too, though. Yeah. Like I am my father. Like all the shit that I've done, like I am him to a fucking t. Mm-hmm. Him and his buddies just as fucked up as we were. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they he knew for sure. He didn't give a fuck what I did as long as I just showed up for work. Not right, get in trouble. Cops knew you were what you were doing. Hey, I got those he got those phone calls before. <laughs> Said you still showed up today though, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm here. I'm still a little fucked up, but I'm here. All right. He didn't my dad did not give a fuck as long as I showed up for work and did a good job. Yeah. I could almost do just about anything as long as like I showed up for work. Mm. If I showed up for work, did work, never heard a fucking beep out of him. I fuck work up. Or I do something wrong at work, he'd be like, hey, you're fucking up. Mm-hmm. Because his thing was like, even though he was a degenerate 
at certain times. He showed up for work. Mm-hmm. No matter what. No matter what, he was at work. Yep. Take a fucking, have a crazy weekend, Monday morning, still there. Yep. It's part of the fun of it, though. It is. <laughs> Man, how about last night? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That was every Monday morning uh-huh. at college. It was every Monday morning at work. Did you get any pussy this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My wife gave me a fucking blowjob in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, man, old times, huh? <laughs> yeah, we were all tuned up. It was great. <laughs> I got jerked off under my pants. <laughs> nice. It's still cool even though I'm 35. <laughs> yeah. The nostalgic feeling. Yeah, fuck yeah. I'll take a fucking handy. Oh, man. Yeah, dude, that's fun. You're supposed to do those fun things. I think so. For sure. (laughs) Now you see people kissing with masks on. (laughs) That can't be real. I think it is. I think it is. I think it's a thing. Yeah, the barrier... He's a facial barrier. I'm going to wear a mask while I fuck you from behind. <laughs> Excuse me? Wait, what? <laughs> Have you seen that? They tell people, like, oh, you, you know, make sure you're wearing your mask if you're having intercourse. Mm. Like, dick's literally inside of you. Like, like I just met you. <laughs> no condom. <laughs> so what are you concerned about? You're concerned about coronavirus, <laughs> not where my dick's been. It's just so funny how, like, there's all these new precautions, but we're disregarding everything, like everything else. Bro, it's so funny because I don't know how medical experts have not said about, like, how wearing the proper mask is important. Like, a proper mask. Yeah. Like, the right tool for the right job. Mm -hmm. Sir, that crescent wrench is not a hammer. Yeah, but it's still getting the job done. These masks aren't doing the job. They aren't even doing the job. Mm -mm. It's crazy. (sighs) I wear a t-shirt over my face. I've been wearing the same mask that I got back in fucking April. (laughs) I haven't washed it. How clean am I? (laughs) Fuckers. I don't, I don't fucking, it's so funny. So crazy. Is that a stink bug? Fuck. Mm. Hate those dirt bags. You may kill it? No. No. (laughs) Fucking shame. (laughs) Show tried to kill one the other day on his leg. He got stink hand from it. Fucking rookie mistake. I'm sweating so bad today. School school schools are a fucking joke. Mm -hmm. I fucking hate the schools. That's where my focus is going to be in my later years, the school system. Building a school. Yeah, you're going to build a school. Can I be your principal? Ferocy Academy. Listen, I'm sorry. I might be a little bit of a fucking arrogant prick at times about things like this. But if we're able to do greatness amongst all of us, I do believe that I can do, if I figure things out and put the right people in the right positions and have good leadership, great things can occur in anything that we would put and now I understand how important private schooling is. Mm-hmm. Like private schooling, learning the education system, learning the school district that you're in, getting to know the superintendent, like going to fucking school board meetings. Like I'm going to have a significant role in like local education for sure. And if I like good private school, you will see me like be a donor to good private schooling. Mm-hmm. It's going to play a much bigger role in my life from here on out because of what I've seen and how districts are and how superintendents are. Like, these people are getting paid significant amounts of money and they're in charge of your child's education. Mm -hmm. Like, teachers are in some of the roughest spots. In Pennsylvania, the school – the education system in Pennsylvania is a little bit of a fucking shit show. Very disappointed in everything. There's good schools around here, but it will. And I'm getting text messages and emails, and I'm like – you motherfuckers can't even keep me updated with when my kid's going to go to school. Like, they canceled elementary school last week because there was two COVID cases. Canceled the whole fucking week. Kids went full remote. My six-year-old, full remote. The, the whole system, oh, my God. Dude, she did 15 minutes of work some days. They told her to fucking recite the goddamn alphabet 10 times and give words that start with that letter. 
for each letter of the alphabet? First grade. Bro, I was like, wait a fucking minute. Are you guys fucking with me? And then give PowerPoint presentations that were actually literally on there. It said for fourth grade. It said that on the fucking PowerPoint. I'm like, I'm like, I fucking hate you people. You losers. You lack of fucking effort pieces of shit. I can't say that to him. I'll say it on here. Mm -hmm. But I look at it. I'm like, you you guys are in charge of educating the children. And then I looked into the, I, I'm, I'm learning all these things now and I'm saying these things now. I didn't do that previously. I just looked at looked online and listened to what people said and reviews and this and that. Superintendent here's a fucking cunt. Complete fucking, I'm disgusted with it. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, is if I'm, if I'm willing to say these things, that means that I have to act. So I'm going to. Like, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm researching and finding out and learning more about the education system, learning more about the private schools that are available to my kids around here, mm -hmm. and I'm going after them. Problem is, right now, the private schools aren't accepting fucking students. Right. They're not accepting fucking students. So it's like, okay, how do I get on the fucking wait list? So in that time, I'm going to learn more about it, and if I like it in there, I'm going to be like, yes, I would like to, this is where I want to go, and I want to become a, a major part in this so that we can become better. Because that's important, because this is a fucking joke. It's a fucking joke. They canceled school last week, okay? Canceled school for Emmy last week. Then, I never got an email or anything about an update of what's going to occur. No update of like, your kid's coming back to school on Monday. Welcome back to school Monday, everything's clean, everything's clear, we're good to go. No fucking emails. Hannah's like, are we going, we like taking Emmy to school or are we like still doing the remote? I'm like, I have no fucking clue. Mm -hmm. I didn't get any, I didn't get nothing. Call them, no fucking answer. Nothing. I'm like, oh, so just like, not going to fucking answer the phone either? Man. It's sacks of so, shit. So was it just no school again? No, no. They went back. Oh. Hannah, Hannah was like, I'm taking Emmy to school. I'm going to drive and see if they're there. Sure enough. They're, they're there. there. Yep. Oh, bro. I'm so disgusted. And these people, see, the, the people that are there are waiting for instruction. Yeah. They're not the ones that are making decisions. <clears throat> like... I don't know what the fucking principal does. I don't know why mass email wouldn't come out from the principal or the person that's running the fucking school. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's no leadership qualities. It's just, like, trying to please the masses. And whenever I challenge them and ask them, they're like, we're just, no, we're doing the best that we can. I'm like, I understand that, but have some fucking balls. Mm -hmm. Say some shit, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's upsetting because uh, it's upsetting to me, and I get emotional and, and things like that, which always isn't the best thing to do. It should be logical and make sound decisions but it's um it's dealing with the kids education system mm -hmm. it's dealing with them learning and growing as people yeah and if you don't take it serious at a young age then it never will be serious like kids are regressing for sure mm -hmm. like without a doubt these young kids in elementary school they're fucking regressing simply because the consistency isn't there mm -hmm. i can see it in emmy that's why we have this fucking tutor you know tutors on it by the way really great person um, <laughs> it was hard to uh, it was hard to keep kids like interested when it was every day and oh my god that's you, what I, you know what I mean being young and like your attention's all over the place and oh and now they don't your 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 attention I'm supposed to feel like I'm in school while I'm at home but then my teacher's not even speaking to me I'm doing things I did when I was three years old and then they want me to know who a, what a botanist is yeah like that they, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. You're doing the alphabet and then saying words like botanist? Yeah. Like, hey, what's a botanist? An oceanographer? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a shit Man. show. So it's just inconsistent, and that's that lack of effort and lack of, like, uh, uh, I don't understand. I don't. I, again, I don't actually know. All I know is, is teachers, teachers are so scrutinized, and it's very difficult. Teachers, cops, mm -hmm. first responders, fucking really tough jobs today. Yep. Really tough jobs. So I look at it, and I'm just like, okay, how do I, what do I need to do to make sure that my kids have the best ability to do good things in life? Mm -hmm. Create opportunity, find good things, and, and I'm in a position to be able to private school my children. I want to do it. And then I'm like, you can't even do it right now. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And some kids will thrive. But even being a teacher and teaching 20 kids in a classroom, and you got two kids that are just fucking off-the-wall screwballs, that are high maintenance, that's tough to deal with right there, let alone have to do all these new curriculums and all these new rules, and they have their own kids at home, and it's like, holy fuck, shit show. And this is the youth of our country. The youth of our country 
that are regressing that aren't being educated in the proper manner. All these new fucking curriculums being put into place. People not wanting to fucking teach history. History being skewed. Like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. That's tough living. Nuts. Do I want my kid to be indoctrinated with a whole bunch of shit from public school or private school? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Oh, How no. is there not just like a blanket, a blanket thing? Like just, hey, let's do a good job. Be a good person. Do good. I'm getting fucking inundated right now with text messages from this sack of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking. I went from all this. Now I'm just all off the plane. <sighs> All congested. I'm antsy right now. Oh, I'm wired out of my fucking Yeah, mind. coffee got me. I'm fucking still hungry. I drank all my fluids. Oh, you are out. You are out. I think we should pick on Shane. Yeah. yeah. Let's pick on Shane. You can. I only have two questions today, by the way. I need another one. Oh, no, two's good as long as they're good. Oh, well, they're okay. <laughs> Internet's running said. out of questions. Internet's running out of questions? Yep. Uh, maybe I could think of one. I have like 15 websites I use. Oh, yeah? And they're all fucking... They're all dry. Yeah. All dried up. Yep, dried the well. Oh, man. It happens. There. Yep. <laughs> well, this weekend some pretty good fights are on. That'll be exciting. Yeah. Khabib and Gaethje. Mm. Are you going... You're going Khabib? I don't I know, think. man. I'm going Gaethje. You're going Gaethje? Yeah. I, I wouldn't... I'm, I'm not a betting man. I don't bet a whole lot. Uh, but it's hard. You you can make a you can make an argument for both. Mm-hmm. You can make an argument for Khabib and for Gaethje. What would I like to see? I'd like to see Gaethje win. Why? Yeah. Just because Khabib's won every fucking fight. It's kind of like I'd like to see. I'd like to see him lose. I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. that makes me. I don't know what that would make me. But uh, I'm not a huge Khabib fan. Uh, but you have to respect his record. And how hard the fucking dude has worked to get to that record. Mm-hmm. So if he wins, I'll be like, Bro. I mean, then fucking and, undefeated. And seeing him win, we're going to witness greatness. I mean, that's what I mean. It, he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. And it's going to come down to game plan because Ferguson and Khabib, similar fight style. Gaethje didn't allow Khabib, Ferguson, Ferguson to take him down. And Khabib, three years ago, would have ended differently. Yeah. For fucking mm-hmm. sure. I just think if Khabib executes his game plan and takes Gaethje down the way he wants to, he'll win. If Gaethje can keep it on the feet. But his, his um, ground game's un, underrated, I think, Gaethje's. Gaethje was a fucking mm-hmm. top national wrestler. Yeah, he's he's just known for striking. He, but I was watching something where uh, wrestling, like Russian wrestling and American wrestling are two different styles. I've seen something. Never. He said this during his press conference, too. I think Gaethje did. He wanted... He said he wanted to go to Brasilia, or Brazil and fight the Brazilian fighters, like the best Brazilian fighters. He wanted to go to Ireland and fight those fighters, and he wanted to go to Russia to fight Khabib. The similarities between all those is they fight to die. Like, the, he wanted to go fight the best because he didn't care about the consequences. Well, so that makes him different, I believe, but you never know. Oh, I mean, he, I don't know. Khabib hasn't really been. Uh, I mean, nobody split that motherfucker open yet. He's only lost one round. Yeah. So nobody. I mean, if Gaethje lands a couple and splits them open, I think it'll be. I think it could be very interesting. I don't know. I th- <coughs> that gets me. Like when fighters go, like, yeah, I, I'm gonna fight to die. I'm like, oh fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, but then I look at Khabib and the dude's dad just died. Yeah. And he's pissed off. Mm-hmm. First fight. After his dad died. It's, it, but it might be a little different because of that. Because you see, look at Walt Harris. That's the same thing happened to his daughter. He comes in, he loses because it's in his head. So you don't, you just don't know. These fighters are built differently. I think Khabib's a little bit different than Walt Harris. Oh, I mean, for sure. But That's, they're both dealing, dealing with loss and how their fight camps are different because that person's not around. They're not in their corner. It's in their head. You, nev- you never know. Yeah, it could go either way, 50-50. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Gaethje's off a... Of, Fucking big win. I'm just excited to see the fight. I just like it. Me too. I won't be able to watch it. Huh? I won't be able to watch it. I'll be working. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go. I'm going to uh, John Foster this weekend. Jay and I are going to go film. Oh. Mm-hmm. What time is the fight? Two. Oh, that's Card right. starts at 2 p.m. 
Fuck me. Really? Mm-hmm. I have a chance. <laughs> I, wa- I, have a chance. I won't be asleep. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I won't be able to watch it. <clears throat> oh, my God. I'm, like, devastated for you. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I'll, I'll get the updates. It's all good. I'm still going to pick... I might bet money this weekend. I haven't bet on UFC in a few weeks. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I haven't won anything sports related. To date? There was, no, there was one. Nope, to date. You're right. <laughs> bet on the Bills this weekend. <laughs> they play the Jets. <laughs> I am not betting on any more sports. And I'm a, yep, nope, I'm not. <laughs> You're not betting on any sports? No. Well, Walt Harris is fighting this weekend. I didn't even know that. I didn't, yeah, he's fighting. He's the third. So I'm going Gaethje. I think Jared Cannonier will pull it out against Whitaker. And oh, then, uh, the nope, I'm going him. Get the fuck out of here. Yep. Uh-huh. And I'm going to go uh, Walt Harris. Haas. You're going to bet against Whitaker. Yes. I'm Shakarov. going with, I'm going with That's Apollo Creed. You go with Apollo Creed 2. <laughs> Dude, Jared Cannonier's a fucking animal. Man, I wish we could put some more stuff on this table. Yeah, it looks great. I love it. Fucking hate it. Color that? Look how cool this is. Boom. These are so cool. Changing the color. Fuck off. I wish it was bigger. I'm just going to fucking clear it off. <laughs> this is a heavy table. Fuck yeah. Oh, man. Well, it's been a good day. Been exciting. Mm-hmm. YouTube video. Another training video going up. Yeah. Getting bigger. Everybody noticed I got bigger. I didn't even notice. I'm just like, oh, look, it's getting bigger. And then Hannah's like, so how much do you weigh now? I'm like, I don't fucking know. She's no. like, you look about 10, 15 pounds bigger than you were. Mm-mm. Nope, definitely not. I eat like, so much mm-hmm. more food. I breathe a little bit heavier. That's okay. It's okay. I like it. The heavier breathing actually burns more calories. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. It's bad for you. It's Super bad. bad for it means you. it's bad. It means it's not good. Yeah. It means you're not in shape. <laughs> Dude, we were throwing football yesterday. I felt like I was Tossing out of shape. Tossing a pig around. You oh, guys yeah, were I love fucking it. panting out there. I forgot how much fun it was throwing football. Yeah. I need to do more of it. We looked good doing it, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I had a couple big catches. Yeah. Arm got warmed up. It just takes like 25 throws for my arm to feel good. Yeah. After 25, I'm like, oh, now it's loose. I could not imagine being like, uh, like, like quarterbacks, pitchers, anybody that throws like that's what they did. Like as they got older, bro, their shoulders are fucked. Bro, imagine how how it feels after an NFL game, like how that shoulder's fucking feeling. Like, I, it's not like you're just walking off and everything's cool. Like, that thing's fucking throbbing. Like, retired quarterbacks, their arms have to be, their fucking shoulders are just like, ah. Oh, Damn it. Crazy. Yep. Crazy. Mike had, Mike's had three surgeries. He mm-hmm. was just, he was a college pitcher. D1 yeah. college pitcher. Mm-hmm. Shoulder surgeries out the ass. His brother Don, same thing. Elbow surgeries mm-hmm. out the ass. Oh, man. That's so nuts. You have pitchers throwing 100 pitches a game. They start every five days in the majors, so put together like 50 starts or something. When an NFL quarterback starts 16 games and throws, what, 50, 60 pass attempts? So that's 50, different. 60 pass attempts is a fucking shitload. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over 35, you're like, oh, dude was throwing that game. Yeah, I'm going on the high end. Yeah. But you're just comparing 60 maximum maybe in an NFL game to 100 pitches. For pitchers that throw. Yeah, pitchers arms are fucked. Yeah. Fucked. Double the fucking starts. And Mike Mike did that just at the college level. Mm-hmm. Imagine big time MLB pitchers like when you really fucking, gotta open mm-hmm. it up. With fucking twelve year careers. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's also way Bro. more pitchers. Huh? The bullpens and stuff, they're deeper in pitching than NFL. Yeah, but oh, there's yeah, not I'm as, just saying like look at look the injuries Mike's sustained and like mm-hmm. he was just he just fucking hard thrower yeah imagine these dudes at like 12 15 fucking years how many years did nolan ryan play greg maddox like a hundred <laughs> it feels like forever 
I don't even – I just know those – I feel like I'm stuck in time with certain sports. Man. Mm-hmm. Good times. Well, Shane, I guess we're going to get this party started with some questions. Again, everybody from here on out, not that this whole thing hasn't been – is every time. Don't take these too serious. Make sure that you're asking these questions to your friends, your family. Send a text message. Maybe send it back to the school. Send maybe a letter. ask the principal. Like a, maybe they write might, it down. They probably won't fucking answer you anyway. <laughs> yeah, send them. Send the principal a, a nice send a question. Mass, mass email throughout the whole entire district. Yep. Reply all. Yep. Here you Would guys you rather go. have? <laughs> would you rather be dickless or blind? There's going to be one person that responds and is like, "Ah, oh, that's yeah. fucking great. Nice. Yep. <laughs> nice." But no, uh, make sure you're doing a good job, everybody. Thank you for listening, and make sure that you are being the best motherfucker that you can be. Shainer, let's have some questions. Oh, would you rather have a 10-inch long belly button that's swayed to music or accordions for legs? Like a, like a dick belly button. Um, that's a little bit long. What kind of dick you got over there, huh? Well, he said it was long and swaying. 10 inches. <laughs> one in Rome. Ten inches is big. <laughs> yeah, it sways yeah, it's music. almost it's a curse. If I was if I had a ten inch cock, I would show everyone. I would have a huge fucking OnlyFans page. It would be crazy. I would be like, look at my dick. Just look at it. I'd make sure it was always looking so fresh and so clean that guys would even want to see it. Mm-hmm. Straight guys, not gay guys. Mm-hmm. Like maybe everybody be like, look at this guy's dick. Kind of like the black guy, the big fucking you, oh, bro. Did you see the one thing on the internet? No. They did, somebody posted this thing where they had the picture of him yeah. just for the Halloween thing. Yeah. And it's like a slide, <laughs> and it's a candy bar where his dick is. And it's like a Milky Way. And you take the Milky Way, and then like a Snickers falls out and looks like his dick. Classic. And then they take that one. Another candy bar comes out. It's his dick. I get it. <laughs> it's awesome. I was like, it's so cool. <laughs> like, like it was, it was. I mean, fucking proportions were on and everything. Man, Looked great. Nailed it. Pretty nailed funny. it. Big, what? big black. Oh, what do we got? Oh, more swag. Yeah, go take a look. See what's in that box. Oh, what is it? Maybe just hold it up. Nobody can see. Oh yeah, <laughs> sick Halloween shirts. Huh? No, it's yeah. We should bring them over. We bring them over. We can. We'll mm-hmm. just tell them everybody their Halloween T-shirts. Okay. That are going to be available Friday night. Which is tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Which is tonight, if you're listening now or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Friday mornings on. What's the date? Friday the twenty third. The twenty third. Yeah, they're available twenty third on actionslash dot com. They're awesome. Halloween t shirts. <laughs> a big old Halloween er. t shirt. <laughs> it's awesome. Fucking dickheads. Anyway, I don't think I'd uh I don't think I'd like to have a ten inch belly button or accordions for legs. Does it look cool? Yeah. Let me see. Throw it over. <laughs> yeah. These are fucking awesome. Oh yeah, we did, we did two colors too. I forgot. I love it. Sick tags, great. Oh man, yeah. fuck yeah. yeah! I like them. I like them. <laughs> Good job. I see that tag. Oh fuck, man! Life's we're have so much fun. fucking killing it right now. <laughs> Love it. Take it all in, everyone. <laughs> this is how you do cool shit. Put a dick on a shirt <laughs> and sell it. <laughs> oh god damn it! But it, you can't see it. You got to show it. You show it. You want to see my wiener? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> You guys will understand later. Yep. <laughs> Soon. Oh, man. All right. Well. What do you got, Shane? I don't Anything? like that question. We're going to move on. 
You don't like the question. No, I'm not having a 10 inch belly button. Or accordion legs. No, that's not fun. I would hate to have that sound. Who would you rather be? What quarterback would you have rather been? Would you rather be Dan Marino? The actor. The actor slash football player. Uh huh. Or Steve Young. <sighs> Super Bowl winning, throwing the Jerry Rice, but have no acting career. Or be Dan Marino. No Super Bowl. No Super Bowl, but... Helped save Snowflake. Also uh, have a lead role in Ace Ventura. And Bad Boys. Oh, yeah. Bad Boys too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going with Dan. You're going with Dan? Fuck yeah. I like cocaine, too. Look at that guy. Throwing bombs, touchdowns. Look at the vision on that. Leading stats. Like playing wonder, in Miami. I wonder who he's looking at in that pose. Like, who's he about to drop a bomb to? I don't know. I definitely wouldn't want to be that cocksucker Troy Aikman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuck him. I'd be Dan Marino, too, just because Steve Young's a fucking terrible analyst. I love Steve Young. Nope. Mobile left-hander. Tony throwing, Romo's Throwing way bombs better. to fucking Jerry Rice. Hmm. Jerry Rice, that selfish bastard. (laughs) How could you say such a thing? I couldn't keep a straight face. (laughs) Randy Moss is way better. (laughs) Get out of here. I'm not disagreeing with that. Did you see the clip where Randy Moss goes, I don't stretch on game day. (laughs) Did you see those? No. He was like, 84 doesn't stretch on game days. You won't see me stretching. (laughs) Why? Because he never stretched on game days. He just played. He just played. He just went out there. I gotta. I go. I'll find the clip and show you. It's fucking hilarious. God damn it! Uh. I'm a big Dan Marino fan. I love the quarterbacks back in the day. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just that nostalgic thing. What about Brett Favre? No. What do you think of Brett Favre? I like Brett Favre. Big Brett Favre fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second that he left Green Bay. Is whenever like people freaked out, went to Minnesota, the Jets, showed his dick to that reporter. Everybody forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Which version of Brett Favre was worse, Vikings or the Jets? Oh, mm. The Jets. I think the Jets too. Way worse at the Jets. They were Did, both cringeworthy. Didn't he have an okay run with the Vikings mm-hmm. the one yeah. season? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brett. Yeah, I'm not a big Packers fan anymore. Once they did that to Brett, Aaron Rodgers is is uh, he's next. I I mean he they're gonna do the same thing to Aaron Rodgers that they did to Brett Favre. It's kind of funny that they actually did that. They're doing it right now. It's happening. Aaron Rodgers is gonna leave. He's gonna go. Be, he's gonna go be. Uh, he's going to the Bears. Who was that mm-hmm. quarterback? I don't know if that's gonna happen. It's just people it are like you're a fucking moron. But inter inter uh, interdivisional rivalries be a good pickup. Bears don't have anybody either. Nick Foles and Trubisky aren't the fucking answer. I don't know. I don't know. Nicky. Big Big Dick Nick. Big Dicky Nicky. Big Dicky (laughs) Nicky. Jesus Christ. Got anything cool over there? What else you got, Shane? My questions suck. I'm disappointed in myself. Everybody else is too. I know. Nothing else? I don't feel comfortable. All right. Let's 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 spitball here. Would you rather fight a gorilla your size or a bear with no claws? Which one would you rather fight? Because gorillas are fucking big and they'll murder you anyway. But what happens if it was like a miniature gorilla your size? Like a 190 pound gorilla. Oh man, that fucking thing killing you. Yeah, because they're like lean as fuck. They're just like steel. Like a silverback? Yeah. Fuck. Yeah, you're done. They punch you, too. I know. Yeah. yeah what would you rather, which one, would you, rather gra- gra- which one would you rather grapple with? I guess they're both the same size as you. Let's do that. I feel like the bear's just going to fucking bite my ass. I mean, I guess the gorilla could, too. Yeah. I think I'd rather fight the bear just because I don't want to be ripped apart. Mm-hmm. That gorilla would rip my fucking arms off my body. I don't want my arms being removed. Yeah, I don't want bear claws in me either. 
I said no claws, though. I know. That's why I'm oh, okay. I'm considering fighting the bear. Yeah, that's why I did. I removed, I removed like, the largeness of the gorilla. I also think, like, the gorilla has an advantage because, like, it's more comfortable standing up. Like, where the bear is, like, more of, like, a... Mm. Stay on all fours type deal. I, I don't think like I can advantage. get a. I don't think I can get a guillotine on either one of them. I think I would I can, definitely try to get like on their back. Yeah, choke them out. Yep, be your only your, your only way you're going to do it. They, that gorilla would fuck you up. Mm. Yeah, they're they're squirrely too. Like they're not just big and strong. Like yeah. they're going to maneuver and oh my god, maybe damn. wrestle a little bit. Like, could you imagine like having to like. Like that time travel thing they talked about. Could you imagine like having to be stuck, actually having to fight one of these things to the death? Like old school stuff, like they used to put you in fucking the ancient or in, in Roman times, mm -hmm. or having to fight the tigers and shit. Like imagine actually having to fight one of these fucking things, or like, like that's what they made you do. Yeah, with no gun, like no gun, spear, like sword, spear, 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 sword, and shield, and like helmet, heavy armor. Yeah, like you got to fight a fucking gorilla. No underwear. On D fucking dick out and stuff. That's what they did back then. Yeah. Like gladiators and shit. Yeah. They just had like the leather fucking. That's right. They didn't have no underwear. They were just free balling it everywhere. Running around fucking. Yeah. Nobody ever thinks about that. Uh uh. And then you got to go fight a tiger and shit. Man. I would be cool though. I think it would be cool. And, like, you, you're you probably training for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Train for it your entire life. If you're a guy, you, if you're a man, that's what the fuck you're doing. Trained to fight animals. Yeah. In the Movie Coliseum. 300. Oh. Hmm. Fucking sweet baby Jesus. They should bring that back. Actually, no. It's, like, bad for the animals and stuff. I forgot. Yeah, you'd probably kill an animal. They're more worried about the animals than them killing you. They're like, oh, fuck you, dickhead. Yeah. Bull should kill you. <laughs> Peter would be on our shit. What's with like red and like bulls like charging at red things? Is that uh, a, still a thing? I believe it has something to do with their. Sorry. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a scientist. Is it because they only see red? Like the color? I don't know. That's what I was saying. I don't it know. It pisses them off though. <laughs> they fucking hate it. They fucking put the, Like they're all happy, like just trotting around. And then boom, red red fucking sheet. I'm gonna fucking kill you. What do they call those guys? Um, it's a Spanish name. I know. Is it just it bullfighter? Mean, it means bullfighter in Spanish. Yeah. El. El fighter. El bullfighter. <laughs> Something like that. The reason bulls act aggressive around red is because they're colorblind. According to the internet. So they're pissed they can't see it. Mm. <laughs> We're dumbasses. A matador. Matador. Damn it. El Matador. No. Sick name. I knew that. You didn't say anything about it. I was it. thinking about why they hate red. Oh. <laughs> Couldn't do two things. So I guess. People it. don't like that. I wonder if that shit is uh, over with. No, it's uh, PBR, isn't it? What's or no. PBR. Uh, professional like bull beer? riding. Oh. Not bull riding. Bull fighting. Bull fighting. Matadors. How they stab them, they fucking kill them. Oh shit! They oh yeah, I don't think it's kill a... them. I thought they just like dodge them. Like they, I thought. No, I no, didn't... they kill them. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Mm -mm. Yeah, that would be part of the thing. Like that was, it's. That's what's fucked up about it. Is part of the the process was like, you're a you're a bullfighter, and like you're you're tempting it and taunting it and you're pissing it off, and as you swing past it, you spear it in the side. Hmm. And then you continue to spear it until it begins to bleed out, gets tired, and then you fucking kill it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was just like a big game yeah. of like tag you're trying to avoid. With killing. I didn't know that was the second part. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> bullfighting is illegal in most countries, but remains legal in most areas of Spain and Portugal, as well as some Hispanic American countries and parts of southern France. It's a heritage thing. Oh, matador, and uh, are all words that can be used to describe a bullfighter, although they are, they are not certainly not interchangeable. Oh, shit, so you have matador and bullfighter aren't the same thing, but that's what they said. 
all words that can be used to describe a bullfighter. Although they are not, they are certainly not interchangeable. Hmm. Do they kill the bull? Yeah. I thought they did. They I do. don't know why I'm questioning myself right now. No, they do. I'm usually the matador's a bullfighter who's tasked with killing a bull. Hmm. And in like certain situations, the bull can like be spared. I, f- I think it's like an attitude thing if they have. Oh, really? Yeah. Man, that's it's like, like rare. So, so us not being educated in that because we're here in America and it was that was built in Spain, Shane. Yeah. Okay, so over there, we don't we don't know their heritage, we don't know anything about it. What are you doing? Just being a child. Yeah. So us not knowing that, and the majority of other countries not knowing the heritage behind it, like. Do you think that since we don't like live there and we don't aren't uh, we don't know their heritage nor their culture, do you think that like uh, we have a say in what goes on over there with bullfighting? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. No. No, I don't think we have any say. No. Mm-mm. It's like coming into my household and telling me I can't do something a certain mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. That's how wars get started. Yes kind of what I, that's where I was going yeah no directing because people coming to America and telling us how to run the fucking country no we're a free country we're not supposed to be like everybody else nor do I want to go anywhere and tell anybody how to live or yep. what to do exactly my whole my whole joke is about you know the the red and the blue the the fucking uh the Democrats and Republicans and all that it's kind of like I think everybody can agree that they should be able to Go to their gay friend's wedding, smoke weed, and carry a gun. Yep, it's a pretty that's a it's a pretty easy way to look at life. I think I should be able to carry my gun, mm-hmm. Second Amendment right. Go to my gay friend's wedding if they want to fucking get married and fuck their life up and give their significant other half their shit. Fuck yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. You can fuck your life up too. I'm gonna get you a great wedding gift. <laughs> I'm gonna buy you. I'm gonna buy you crystal stemware. Mm-hmm. You're gonna love it. Sheets, Egyptian. <laughs> Probably crazy <laughs> book on Tantra from a crazy ant. <laughs> Have phenomenal finger foods, maybe a live band. Great. I don't care if you're a couple of homos going at it or a couple of lesbians having a good time. Fuck yeah, go ahead. Guess what? When you begin to hate each other after about three or four fucking years, you want to get divorced and fuck your life up uh, financially? Have at it. You can do that. You can do that. I don't care. Just be a good person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then uh, smoke weed. Yeah. There's... <laughs> Anybody that thinks marijuana is uh, is the worst thing in the world, I think that we have a way bigger problem. There is medicinal marijuana. It's been proven. It works. It helps. It's actually great for anxiety over all of the fucking shitbag pharmaceutical FDA-approved anxiety medications. Give me a fucking break. And Second Amendment. This is America. I should be able to carry my gun. That's what I believe. Yeah. Safely. Take a fucking class. Use your melon. 62 fucking percent. <laughs> but no, I think that, uh, I think that's the, that's pretty basic, simple concepts of life. Yep. That pretty much sums up the nutshell in my head about what I believe. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Got away from that. No other countries in the, in the world have that. No other ones do. Just America. And the further we get away from those concepts, the bigger problems we end up having. Mm-hmm crazy yep breaks my fucking heart sometimes really really chaps me my ass fucking chaps my ass Mm -hmm. grinds rubs me raw Mm -hmm. it grinds my gears really burns my patch fucking assholes tickles my pickle no, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't yeah. Complete. Sorry, wrong That's one. That's actually a positive. Yeah, it's like not a, a positive. Oh, like yeah, That sorry. gets me excited. That tickles my pickle. <laughs> Feathers my balls. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> God damn it. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm hungry. Let's go eat. We're going to go to work. All right, everybody. Make sure you're doing a good job feathering your balls and feather your wife's balls. <laughs> metaphorically. No, not, not literally. Metaphorically. But maybe maybe she does. It's okay. Uh, either That's way. Cool too. It's cool, too. Whatever it is. Help each job. other out. 
<laughs> Slapping asses, <laughs> eating your Wheaties. Take her out for a nice steak dinner and have sex with her in the car. <laughs> I fucking love this. I'm out of here. Bye bye. See ya. <laughs>